Now you may want to run your PC around the clock, then you will face the annoying problem of the fan noise. There are computers out there that are fanless, but any old PC is probably as powerful as these new expensive fanless computers. So why waste the money? Let's make an old PC completely fanless and run it 24-7. I had my home automation server running around the clock on this Raspberry Pi. Eventually I got the need to move that system to something more stable and powerful. So I took an old Intel i3 computer and decided to make it fanless. Now there are two problems. One is the power supply fan and another one is the processor fan. Let's deal with the power supply unit first. To see what's inside this PSU, first I removed it from the case. This unit is rated at 380 watts. Inside it looks like a very well designed unit. There is a lot of room between components so air can move very well around them. But overall this is still a bad design. This is a metal box with a heat source trapped inside. That's why there is a fan. Here's an example of a fanless PSU. This industrial grade unit is rated at 480 watts. The backside has a big heat sink. Also there is a lot of free space inside. But there is no fan. Here's an example of an exceptionally bad PSU design. This is so tight that even a fan won't do much here. Now let's see what will happen if this original PSU runs without a fan and without the metal cover. I put some protection on the bottom side and installed the PSU back inside the case. Then I installed a fresh operating system which is a pretty power intensive process and checked the temperature with my fingers. Now we deal with AC power here. Only stick your fingers inside the PSU if you know what you're doing. Don't get yourself 3 electro shot. Subscribe to my channel right now. To my surprise, these heat sinks were pretty cool to the touch. So I decided to see how much power this PC actually takes in. To my amazement, it was idling at around 40 watts with an occasional jump to 70. Now this PSU isn't running even close to the maximum rating. Of course to get such a low wattage I had to remove all the unnecessary consumers. For example graphical card, CD drive and any USB devices. Also I'm using an SSD drive on this PC. And also I am running the least amount of applications on this host system. Later I also unplugged all the LEDs on the front panel of this computer. I decided to provide this PSU with a better access to cool air and removed some obstacles. I wanted to do a longer test and find out if the heat would accumulate. So I attached a thermometer to one of the heat sinks and started running my home automation server on this PC. After a couple of days the temperature was a little higher. I waited a couple more days. And sadly I noticed that the heat started indeed accumulating. The processor temperature was higher than two days before. Two days ago it was around 30 Celsius, that's 86 Fahrenheit. This affects the energy consumption, which means the power supply will generate more heat. But this was good news. This means that the power supply is actually stable without the fan. So there were no thermal runaway happening. So I decided to upgrade this setup. I changed the orientation and the position of this PSU. I placed it in an upward position on the front of the case. The idea here was to separate the PSU from the heat that was rising from the processor. Also I changed the orientation so that cool air could enter heat sinks more efficiently. And I changed the power saving configurations in BIOS. Then I waited a couple more days and it had effect temperature was stable around 43 Celsius, that's 109 Fahrenheit. Now this is a completely acceptable temperature for electronics like that. So I decided to move to the next issue. Let's deal with the challenging CPU cooling system. First I removed the CPU fan and the motherboard to plan my next move. If I just remove this fan from the heatsink that clearly won't be enough. I used a lot of time to think about what to do here. First I had the idea to just attach a big piece of aluminum to this original heatsink. But then I thought that this original system was actually very weak. The fan was hardly even spinning. It was so quiet that I could just leave it like that. But I wanted to build a completely fanless system. So I decided to find a much bigger CPU heatsink and try that without a fan. I had this old heatsink laying around. It seemed like a good option. See the difference in size from the original cooling system. Now because the mounting holes did not match exactly, I decided to use zip ties. Yeah. They hold this heatsink in place just the right way. Not too tight, but tight enough. 
Also, I decided to cut open the top section of the case so that hot air could escape more efficiently. Now the hot air won't have any obstacles while it travels up. Then I carefully put everything back together. See how much space for air there is now. So now it was time for testing. The start went ok and after an hour the new passive cooling system was hardly even warm. Also the power supply temperature seemed decent since they affect each other. So I waited one day and unfortunately I noticed that the CPU temperature started occasionally rising close to 50. That was not good. Something had to be done and I found these aluminum plates laying around. So I decided to do some hacking. I carefully placed them in the heatsink. The PC was running all this time. Those plates had just the right thickness so they stayed in place pretty well and the contact was good. The idea here was to add more surface area and have more space between the fins. Surface area and air mass is what we need for convection cooling to work. Then I waited a day and that didn't help at all. Temperature went way up. This is called a thermal runaway. The amount of heat entering the heatsink is more than the amount leaving. So heat will accumulate in the heatsink and temperature will continue rising indefinitely. So I decided to add some bigger aluminum plates. Now this setup was getting pretty heavy and started stressing those zip ties. I used some wire to slightly push the heatsink against the motherboard and provide some support. Then again I waited a couple more days. And it worked! CPU temperature was stable at around 35 Celsius, that's 95 Fahrenheit, and these aluminum plates were actually cold to the touch. So I called this a success for now. And there you have it, completely fanless PC running 24-7. I will though have to revisit this subject after approximately a month of uptime, since the amount of entering and leaving heat seems to be a matter of delicate balance. Also there is a warning, now convection cooling is a very slow process compared to active cooling. For my application this is totally fine. My processor does not experience any fast performance spikes. If your application requires all of the processor's power, heat transfer may not happen fast enough and your processor may experience critical temperature for some period of time. But overall, for my use, this hack is a success. It's completely silent and also energy efficient. What do you think about this setup? Leave a comment below. Please, like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.